the types of olive oil that you keep in your own kitchen? Do you have more than one type? And if so, if so, why? Well, I've got uh, usually three or four different oils in my kitchen at any given time. That's partly because I uh, tend to buy them in uh, uh, numbers greater than one because I often find myself running out <laughs> when I really need it. And so I make sure that I've got plenty. Um, uh, but I don't really uh, keep specific oils um, intentionally. What I'm interested in with oils, as with many other things in cooking, is um, the diversity of materials that there are to explore and to play with. And so I've always got um, uh, oils uh, whose producers I have experience with, and so I know that they're going to be good um and they're relatively young that is to say they haven't been sitting around on a store shelf for a couple of years which is sometimes a problem so i i always check the date before i i buy something do you have a range of styles do you try to have a range of styles from you know very mild and or, uh you know uh late harvest to the more pungent early harvest ones yeah when it comes to choosing the oils i have i i don't really choose by style necessarily um uh it, it's more a matter of what's available and you know these days especially that's unpredictable <laughs> um uh, some of the places you would expect to have wonderful selections all the time uh, that they, they're becoming thinner I hope that'll change for the better again. But uh, at the moment, I kind of take what I can get. And um, uh, if there's an opportunity to get, say, a, a Tuscan uh, varietal that I know is going to be a little more pungent and something else, uh, maybe a, a Spanish varietal that's going to be more middle of the road, then I'll um, I'll try to get a diverse uh, set. But otherwise, it's just, you know, what's what's there for me to choose from. You know, despite this range of styles that you and I know exists in the olive oil world, most chefs tend to have just one oil in their kitchen. What would you say to them about why they should think about maybe stocking more than one oil in, the, in a professional restaurant kitchen? Well, it seems to me that uh, when it comes to olive oil, it's, it's like any other um, ingredient, uh, kind of main, uh, let's see, um, it's like any other kind of significant ingredient that you use a lot in a kitchen. Um, if the world has many different versions of that ingredient to offer, of course, you're going to explore them, right? Because uh, it's a chance for you to uh, make decisions based on your own tastes and, and thereby make your cooking more personal. Uh, and the world does have a lot of different olive oils <laughs> to offer. Uh, so simply sticking with one because you happen to know it, um, I, I think is just uh, unnecessarily restricting your, your chances for, uh, for creativity. Can you give some examples of uh, maybe matching a type of oil to a particular dish? Are there times when you, you know, you would prefer to have something more mild and some at times when you would prefer to have something more pungent and, you know, aggressive? If you could be specific in your examples, that would, that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, uh, when it comes to choosing styles for particular dishes, um, I, I do... Uh, if if the dish is relatively simple um, and the oil is going to be very prominent, then uh, usually I'm going to go for something that's that's uh, kind of pleasant on its own. You know, it doesn't need to be uh, part of an ensemble. Um, so you know, if it's if it's going to be just for dipping bread in, or dipping vegetables in, or um, using in a in a mayonnaise or an aioli or a pesto where it's going to be you know a really prominent part of the the finished dish then um i'll go for something that's uh very friendly <laughs> fruity and uh, uh not especially pungent not especially bitter on the other hand if it's uh, a complicated dish with lots going on um uh, and and has its own kind of intrinsic 
fruitiness or sweetness, then I'm looking to to balance those qualities. And so, uh, you know, bean dishes and uh, soups and stews of all kinds, um, those kinds of things I really do, uh, think do benefit from uh, an oil that's going to uh, kind of make itself known in that in that uh, complex mixture. Yeah, it seems like this, especially Americans have a hard time with some of these more bitter, pungent, piquant oils. Uh, they kind of back away from them. What what techniques would you suggest for making these oils more approachable for people? Are there you know certain culinary techniques that a chef could use to introduce people and get them to like uh, these pungent oils a bit more? Well, I, I think when it comes to getting people to appreciate a particular style of oil, it, it it's really a, a cognitive matter. You know, uh, liking is something that's sort of based on your database of experience and your expectations. And if uh, whatever it is you're tasting is kind of outside the bounds, um, then you're not going to like it. And so what it really comes down to is uh, adding to that database of experience in a in a way that makes the experience as pleasant as possible. And so you can kind of acknowledge that this is an unusual uh, uh, flavor, but it's a really interesting one and you can do a lot with it so why don't you give it a try um unfortunately i think what that really involves is a kind of person to person communication i don't think you can make a dish that has a robust oil in it and just sort of give it to someone and you know if they happen to like the dish great but they haven't made the connection between the dish and the that particular oil so I really think it does depend on a kind of uh, personal intervention uh, uh, to to let people know what it is that's going on, to maybe even explain the logic behind the dish that you're presenting, and um, and then encouraging people to give them the the freedom to react the way they want to, but then um, kind of work with that. And uh, uh, th there's always a second or third bite. <laughs> so you can make that uh, additional moment in their database um, a little bit more informed and open-minded. Yeah, I mean, it kind of calls out for more, more education uh, in the restaurant setting, maybe. In, with on menus, maybe chefs could be doing some more education about the, the oil that they're actually presenting and why. Do you think that kind of... Uh, you know, outreach would help uh, broaden the acceptance of different styles of oil? Uh, I do think it would help for, for chefs or servers or menus to, um, to provide information um, so that people understand a bit more about what it is that they're uh, eating. Uh, of course, uh, some people aren't interested in being educated. <laughs> they're, they're just there for a good time. So I think it does take a, a you know a certain degree of um, canniness on the part of the the people doing the educating to, to see whether the person is open to that at the moment um, it, I think it would also be possible maybe to um, you know pre-select who it is you're you're trying to inform by offering a, you know maybe a tasting of two or three oils um maybe even not something you actually pay for but you just set down at the table um with if there's a bread course you know some bread and then two oils instead of just one and then say something about how they're different and we'd be interested to know what you think that kind of thing what sensory science has to tell us about um, the idea that maybe a particular style of oil can elevate a dish or, you know, conversely make a dish less pleasing. Can you talk a little bit about the sensory science behind that? Yeah, the, the sensory science of uh, food preference is complicated <laughs> uh, because it is subjective you know when you get right down to it it's what a particular person likes or doesn't like and not only just that particular person but that particular person at that particular moment um 
And, you know, if you're engaged in conversation with a table mate uh, at a restaurant, you may only be half paying attention to what it is that you're tasting. Um, so it, it is uh, complicated. I, I would kind of boil it down to a couple of different things. One is that um, uh, you can use an ingredient like olive oil uh, for a, a couple of different things. You can use it um, to harmonize with whatever is already in the dish so that it's it kind of goes along with whatever else is in the dish and blends in. Um, when that happens, of course, uh, it loses its individual identity. So, you know, it's contributing, but it's not especially evident that it is. Uh, on the other hand, you can also use an oil uh, for balance or for contrast um, to, you know, if you've got a very sweet dish and you want to add a little edge to it, um, then uh, that edge is going to be more prominent than it would be if everything was edgy. Um, and there you're you're adding a dimension um, instead of kind of con contributing to the dimensions that are already there. Um, uh, and uh, that means that, that that oil is going to be more prominent, more more obviously there. And it kind of depends on what someone is is aiming for with a particular dish. Um, sometimes, Harmony is the thing, and you just you know want uh, a particular ingredient in that dish to be highlighted for its own sake or the combination. Uh, sometimes you really do want something to kind of be a counterpoint. Um, uh, and so uh, I, I think those are sort of general principles that would apply um, no matter what the particulars of a, uh, a given moment of tasting by a particular person. Yeah, we talk, you know, we think so much about matching food and wine and certainly sommeliers uh, dive deep into that and have a lot of strong thoughts about how wine can elevate a dish or complement a dish. Do you think it's a legitimate um, avenue of, of discourse and exploration to look at this um, possible synergy between olive oil and certain types of food, certain types of dishes? Yeah, no, I, I think it's uh, a fine uh, uh, pursuit to to try to find particular um, combinations of oils and dishes or ingre other ingredients that that seem to um, really work. Um, and I've participated in some some exercises along those lines. And again, because um, preference is subjective, uh, you you generally end up with a range of <laughs> reactions. Um, and I'm, you know, these were never formal studies with statistics, uh, but my my guess is that, uh, you know, most of the time, people who like olive oil liked the combinations, even if they were intended not to be as good as, uh, you know, the, the use of a different oil. But I think that it's a little bit um, uh, tricky to compare this kind of thing with uh, pairing food and wine because of course with food and wine they're they're in a way equals you know you're a wine on its own and the question is whether that combination works both for the food and for the wine in the case of olive oil of course it's in the dish and uh so you don't get that chance to really appreciate the oil for itself um, and I'm not sure that it would actually be such a good idea <laughs> to serve a little cup of oil along with a dish. So that, that I think, is the kind of conceptual difference between the two. I know you've done a lot of olive oil judging, and I wonder if that experience has given you any um, particular insights or thoughts about terroir and whether that's a legitimate concept when it comes to olive oil. Do you see an um, uh, expression of terroir in some of the olive oils that you're judging? Well, of course, terroir is a slippery term, and uh, some people define it uh, very narrowly, meaning you know the the uh, soil from which the product comes, uh, and others define it much more broadly to include climate. Others will include uh, the traditions of that place for that particular product. Uh, if you define it narrowly uh, to mean the the soil. Uh, you know the geological uh, substrate of the uh, of the crop. 
then I think um, uh, I would be skeptical. Um, but if you if you included climate, then I think absolutely. Um, uh, in the years that I've been tasting oils, you know, there have been good years and bad years in Spain and Italy and California and South America and, you know, every place. And uh, it's been a chance to see just how big a difference it can make when, you know, you have drought or when you have an early freeze or things like that. Uh, they make a huge difference to the quality, not just of individual oils, but you know, all the oils that have been submitted from that particular region. So um, uh, it's I, I would definitely say that it's good to think of olive oil the way we kind of think of uh, wine, which is to say there, there are definitely vintages. <laughs> there are good years and bad years, um, years where... Uh, um, uh, oils from particular regions will have particular characteristics, uh, largely from the weather rather than from the from the soil. Of course, though the the soil will affect you know how how um, a plant can deal with drought stress, for example, that kind of thing. Um, but I think that's uh, kind of what makes olive oil interesting is that it's not monolithic. Um, uh, even the same variety from the same place is going to be different year to year, uh, the same way that um, uh, a wine is different year to year. The, the disadvantage for olive oil, of course, is that it's only good for a couple of years. And so you have a limited amount of time to uh, to appreciate that. What about the, uh, you know, the impact of cultivar? Are you finding in your tastings that a certain olive grown in Tuscany or Greece uh, is considerably recognizably different from the same cultivar grown in California. When it comes to distinguishing uh, cultivars, um, you know, the, the people I taste with who are real professionals, uh, they can often pick thing, these things out in a blind tasting. Uh, when I can't, because I, I'm simply not, uh, I'm a more, more of a generalist taster <laughs> rather than a specialist. Um, but that said, yes, there, there are definitely um, uh, qualities that come out in varietal, particular varietals that are grown in particular places. And I can recall uh, um, not exactly violent disagreements, but disagreements among the judges as to whether a particular quality that came out of an oil in California that would not come out of that oil in Italy, whether that was a legitimate flavor. And some people would say that's too specific to California. It's not typical of the variety, and therefore we have to downgrade it. And other people who would say, but it's delicious, so <laughs> let's upgrade it. Uh, so yes, there are differences, and that can be a fun exercise. In fact, uh, exercise makes it sound too serious. Fun, um, um, uh, it, it's a, a fun uh, kind of activity food activity uh, to uh, to get the same varietal from a couple of different places and then uh, really pay attention to their nuances and see what they're like side by side. And certainly time of harvest would have something to do with that, with, uh, you know, and it would complicate the picture even more if you're talking about time of harvest, different processing methods. Does that kind of uh, affect yeah, I would say that, uh, that there are so many things that happen between um, uh, an olive ripening on a tree and are enjoying the oil made from that olive. There are so many different factors that go into the, that final flavor uh, that that's one of the reasons why it's really difficult to say that there's a, a specific uh, contribution from the soil because, yeah, the 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 ripeness of the olive makes a difference. Um, the growing season, whether the tree had enough water, whether there have been olive flies uh, being a problem in the orchard, uh, when they're harvested, how they're harvested by hand or by machine, uh, the, the degree of damage to the olives during the harvesting, the period of time between the harvest and the pressing, 
which in some places is uh, days and in other places is hours. Um, all these things make make a huge difference. So um, yeah, it's, but again, I try to look at that in a positive way to think that, you know, that there are uh, so many things going on that it's not possible really to ascribe a particular flavor to a particular aspect of the production. Um, but it's, it's that variety that makes olive oil as interesting as it is. Didn't put this on your question list, but I wonder if you might have, if you can think of any sort of epiphany you've ever had with olive oil, um, either cooking yourself or in a restaurant or, you know, eating in someone's home sometime when, wow, that olive oil and that dish just, you know, really soared. Well, when it comes to epiphanies with olive oil, I, I guess I would have to say that they came not in a dish, but in tasting them attentively for the first time, uh, which happened at a particular moment in my life. And yeah, I, I remember that very vividly because I just had no idea <laughs> that there was, first of all, so much going on in a particular flavor, but that uh, different oils could be so different from one another. And uh, so this is when I was kind of dragooned um, at the last minute and unexpectedly to replace a judge at a tasting that I was there to observe, not to participate in. And um, uh, so I really had to learn fast. And um, the uh, guy in charge of the tasting gave me a crash course. And that was uh, you know, a, a, an eye opener, a palate opener. It was uh, yeah, just a, a wonderful experience. Just wondered if you might have any final thoughts about how to engage chefs and consumers in this journey of discovery uh, of olive oil. Well, I think the the best way to engage uh, cooks and eaters alike in uh, the the world of olive oil is just to open it up to them. I mean, because my guess is that most people simply don't know that that world exists. Uh, they think of olive oil as, you know, something kind of monolithic. And in fact, it's, of course, anything but. And um, so the more that we can get the word out that uh, it is it is a, a wild and wonderful world, and there's a lot going on there, a lot to appreciate, um, uh, a lot to enjoy. Um, uh, I, I think that's the that's the key, just to to get people uh, aware, and then get them intrigued enough by a couple of experiences that they then go off and and explore.